Hey, welcome back to room 237. This is John coming at you with another classic monster review. And yes, this time I'm finally getting to Dracula. What a real vampire movie is. This is back before they were sparkly. Sparkly vampires, yeah, whatever. Anyway, so Dracula was released in 1931, starring the late. Well, not really late, he was old when he died, but starring the legendary uh, Bela Lugosi. My, probably my second favorite horror legend next to Karloff himself. Bela, Bela Lugosi is perfect as Dracula. I know, I wish I had all of these separately. That'd be nice. I suppose I could do that, but yeah, whatever. Um, there's a lot of shit that comes from Dracula. First of all, it, it was based on the Bram Stoker novel, which of course, you know, the novel's like this, but the movie's like that, in terms of just, it's sort of like Frankenstein. You know, it, there was a lot of stuff that Frankenstein didn't have from the movie, uh, didn't have in the, from the novel in the movie. Um, I can't remember the sequel names for Dracula. I don't know if they touch upon the novel anymore. But this is an enjoyable movie for a lot of reasons. Because one, it was one of the first talkies. I mean, the silent era was over, so they were rushing in um, making all these talkie films. And I want to get the name Todd Browning. Todd Browning directed Dracula. Now, he was successful in silent films but then when he made Dracula he was worried because he didn't know how to direct a movie with sound and what's really ironic about this is you know Dracula came out first it was one of the first silent films but it it has no music which I'll get into and it was known for its great portrayal but then that same year, Frankenstein comes out where the monster is silent, but it's a, t a talking film. So it was all over the place in the 30s, but those are, these are the best monster movies. Uh, Bela Lugosi was a poor, broke, Hungarian actor who couldn't speak a word of English. He actually learned all of his lines uh, uh, phonetically for the role, which is outstanding because... He has that iconic voice. I mean, everything everything we attribute to vampires before they got all sparkly and stupid. The whole thing with the cape and the slicked back hair and the whole like, ah, I'm Dracula. The whole accent. Like, the fucking Count from Sesame Street is Bela Lugosi. Straight up. Well, it's not him, but you know, it's like a little parody of him. Um... You get some great performances. I mean, you also have Dwight Fry as Renfield. He, pretty much the story of Dracula, which is sort of like Frankenstein. I mean, even if you haven't seen it, you know what it's about. This guy, Renfield, he gets sent for, to, he gets sent to Transylvania to go to the, the castle of Dracula. And this is probably one of the first movies to do the whole thing where someone's trying to get somewhere and townspeople tell him you don't want to go there it's a bad place but he's just like ah pish posh fuck that I can go if I want to and Dwight Fry people know he played Fritz and Frankenstein he was Dr. Pretorius's assistant and bride of Frankenstein he has a very distinct look to him great character actor from the 30s and I think Renfield is his best role because in the beginning He's a very proper gentleman. But then once he meets Dracula, he you know, he becomes this sort of inferior vampire that just eats ants and flies and stuff, but he's always he's always like oh, his eyes are always big and he's always like hissing his words and acting insane. He's supposed to be a maniac and an insane person. <clears throat> In fact, when there's probably my favorite image is that famous scene on the ship where Renfield puts Dracula on it. Then they just kill everyone on the ship. So when the ship 
ends up in England, you just hear like the hoo, 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 hoo. You just hear the laughing, and they look down the stairwell, and they just see Renfield st standing down there like, with that laugh. And he looks maniacal, like Dwight Fry did a fantastic job as Renfield in this movie. But, of course, all the focus goes straight to Bela Lugosi. I mean, he's able to control people with this hypnotic stare. And the camera does a great job at just capturing the light around here. To really, and he does like that, that gaze. That looks great. And as, as I said earlier, there's no music. It was because Todd Browning didn't think in a movie that had sound to put a soundtrack so you know there's no church organs or any kind of gothic sound music there's no music so in the scenes where nothing's happening or if it's just Dracula walking across the room to someone it's dead silence except for like cracking of the film which I think adds to the atmosphere of it it makes it creepier and spookier Makes it more intense. So that's one of those things where a fault worked out in its favor. Of course, this also establishes how, you know, vampires don't have reflections. They don't like Wolfsbane. You'd be killed through with a stake through the heart. Uh, I can't remember who played Van Helsing. I'm guessing it's Edward Van Sloan, but I could be wrong. He plays Van Helsing, and he slowly figures out what Dracula is. Like, he sees that he doesn't have a reflection. He sees that he's afraid of a crucifix, and it just leads up to a great climax at the end. Um, I didn't enjoy Dracula as much as I did the very first time I saw it. It's not like Frankenstein or Bride of Frankenstein where I can just pop it in any time. I do still enjoy Dracula very much. But, excuse me. I guess I don't know where I was going with that. But it is one of the best vampire movies ever made. I mean, we owe... Like, in my Frankenstein review, I talk about how we owed a lot of tropes to that movie. It's the same with Dracula as far as what would become a vampire film. And I don't really know how to explain it. It's just the way Bela Lugosi plays him. The whole thing like with the cape and the thing with the hands and the accent, the slick back hair. Just uh, next to Nosferatu, my favorite vampire movie is Dracula. But, unfortunately, you know, these movies are very short, so it's not very, it's not really a whole lot to go into, but, yeah, I, I wanted to review all six of these, because I really wanted to have, like, a good classic Universal Monster playlist. I do plan on getting to the Wolfman sometime soon, because I haven't seen that in a while, and then uh, the Invisible Man and the Mummy, on top of whatever other ones I have. I had a long day at work today. But yeah, Dracula, great vampire movie. Classic. Much, much different than the vampire stuff of the 80s. Especially, very different than Christopher Lee's Dracula, which hopefully someday I'll get to the Hammer films. But yeah, Dracula is still a great... Like, to me, that's a vampire. That's what I want to see in a vampire movie. And Bela Lugosi is the best. But, you know, I know this review is kind of all over the place. And I have, didn't get much into the story very much. But, I mean, you've heard of Dracula. You know who he is. He goes after the blood of virgins. He can hypnotize them, do mind control. He turns into a bat, which you can tell is just a rubber bat on strings. But that is to the charm of the movie. Dracula is awesome. But that's all I got, so thank you.